let's do 4x cubed plus 11x squared minus 8x minus 10 all divided by x plus 3. So we start off x plus 3 into and make sure these are written in descending order, the x cubed, then the x squared, then the x, and then the constant. A little hint is, is if the biggest exponent is 3, there will be one more term, because for the constant you'll have it. So we should have four terms if the highest exponent is 3. Once in a while, you'll have a term missing, like if this was 4x cubed plus 11x squared minus 10, and you'll have to write plus 0x. It's like a placeholder, just like when you write 105, you have to put the 0 the 1 and the 5. In this case, they're all there, so we have 4x cubed plus 11x squared minus 8x minus 10. Okay, so we're ready to go. All right, so remember, you want to concentrate on the first term out in front and the first term inside. x times what will give you a 4x cubed. See if you can figure that out. Put it up on top. Do this with me. And if not, you can go over here and just divide to get your answer. That's going to be a 4x squared. Now, you don't have to put the plus sign in front of that, but if you want to, you can. Now, I have to remember, I'm multiplying this 4x squared by the entire term. Um, a binomial out in front, so I have to remember, I'm really going to multiply the 4x squared times x plus 3, not just times the x. So, 4x squared times x plus 3, I could do it here, 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. It should always match up so it's exactly the same, and it's really plus 4x cubed, correct? And 4x cubed times 3 is plus 12x squared, which of course you would get by doing it this way as well, just using the distributive property 4x cubed plus 12x squared. All right. Now, you do not add. You're going to subtract, which means change signs, and then add. So, if this was a plus, you're going to change signs, and then we're going to do the arithmetic. So, I have 4x cubed minus 4x cubed. This should always be nothing under here, because you're subtracting the same thing from itself or adding its opposite, and I've got 11x squared minus 12x squared. It is not 23x squared. All right, so we have a negative 1x squared. If you'd like, you can just write negative x squared. And I'm going to extend this and just bring down the rest of the terms. So I'm going to bring it all down. Okay, now I'm going to, it's like I'm starting all over. Again, concentrating on the first term here and the first term here. So x times what will give you a negative 1x squared. Can you figure it out? That's going to be minus 1x, which I'm just going to write as minus x. All right? Because for a final answer, if you put a 1 there, at the end you're going to take it off. So if you put minus 1x, that's fine. So this is going to be negative x squared or negative 1x squared. It's up to you if you want to write the negative 1x or just negative x squared. But I also have to do the negative x times 3. Remember, what you're doing is multiplying it by the entire x plus 3. So that's going to give you minus 3x. And again, do not add. You're going to subtract, which means you're going to change signs. So this was a minus sign, you're going to change it to a plus sign. This was a minus sign, you're going to change it to a plus sign. So if it's a minus sign, it changes to a plus. If it's a plus sign, it changes to a minus. All right, first terms cancel out, right? Now I've got negative 8 plus 3. These are like terms, correct? So I've got negative 5x, and just bring down the rest of it, negative 10. All right, let's do it again x times, again, concentrating on the first term in each, x times what will give you negative 5x. Can you figure it out? Negative 5. 
So I'm going to multiply negative 5 times the whole quantity out in front, the whole x plus 3. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And again, do not add. You have to change signs before you add. So I'm going to change this from a negative to a positive and change this one from a negative to a positive. Hey, did this come out evenly? No, it didn't. All right, negative 5x plus 5x, that cancels. But this time, notice, I've got negative 10 plus 15. That's 5. This last thing here is going to be your remainder because x times what is going to give you 5? Well, uh, there's no more x in the, in the part. So basically, if this last number here, it's, that, it's uh, exponent on x, if there was an x, is smaller than the exponent here, you're done. If this is just an x, it means once you just get to a constant like 5, you're done. All right. So what does this mean? It means the quotient is up here on top, the 4x squared minus x minus 5, and the remainder is 5. How do we write that answer? Sorry, this is uh, hard to see it all on one page, but the answer is going to be written as 4x squared minus x minus 5 plus, now, the way to write the remainder is a plus. You write the remainder 5 over what you divide it by. You divide it by x plus 3, so that's your answer. This is similar to when you're doing arithmetic. Like if you do 3 into 11, you get 3 remainder 2, and you write 3 and 2 thirds. That means 3 plus 2 over 3. So in other words, the remainder of 2 you put in the numerator, and then what you were dividing by 3, that would go in the denominator. So this is our answer, but we do need to check it.